Ivy League colleges are sending their acceptance and rejection letters starting today, and the latest numbers show it is harder than ever to get into the best schools in the United States. Bloomberg News reporter Janet Lauren covers high ed higher education and has been tracking these numbers as they come out. And Janet, let's just walk everybody through the latest. We've got Yale just releasing its acceptance numbers. The school admitted 7.4 percent of applicants. That's a record low. Princeton offered spots to 8.4 percent of applicants. That's the smallest percentage in its history. And and then head out west, everyone, and Stanford University also accepted the smallest ratio ever. Only 7.1 percent of applicants received invitations. So we're expecting some numbers from Harvard and UPenn at 5 p.m. Eastern. So, Janet, let's start with why is it so hard to get into these colleges these days? That's pretty tough going. Well, uh, it's a math formula for the most part. They're getting a lot more applications. And for the most part, they're not expanding their freshman classes. So if more people apply and they're the same number of spots, you are going to get in. It's so weird because these are very expensive places to go to college, right? And if you look at the, the population, it's not like we have a heck of a lot more teenagers. Uh, in the middle of this crisis, I mean, I guess we're past it now, but it's not a V-shaped recovery. Why are all these kids applying? Why are the applications, why does everyone want to go to these schools? A couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, you have the common application, which wasn't around when I applied to college 20 years ago. It's very easy to apply online. You don't have to type in your distinctive essay for Yale and Princeton and Stanford. You have one application where you can apply to multiple schools. You can use your essay for all different applications? They each of the schools has their own supplement, um, if they have a supplement, but it's not um, you know, the same as it was before where you have to write but, unique essays for all of this. But they're expensive. Things. I mean, you're right. It's not the economy certainly isn't as dire as it was a few years ago, but I mean, it is expensive to apply to each of these schools, and yet, so people are using that universal application but applying to more schools? Is that kind of what's going on here? They are applying to more schools. They also see these numbers and they say, you know, I, what are the chances that I'm going to get into Princeton? Maybe I should apply to a few more schools. Schools. Mm. So as you know, they think their chances go down, they're going to add a few more schools to their list. And these schools are expensive, but you know, the Ivy League and the Stanford's and the MIT's of the world have very generous financial aid packages. So if you don't make, your parents don't make a lot of money, in the case of Harvard, if you make, they make less than $60,000 annually, you don't, you're not going to pay anything. Uh, great column the other day by Amity Schlaes, by the way, about how it might not pay off to go to these schools. But you, you, one of your stories today um, illustrates very well what colleges are doing to try and deal with the extra load, right? They have these alumni running around uh, doing interviews for them. How's that working out? Uh, well, as the number of applications increase, uh, the, these schools rely on alumni to do, to, to do their interviews. And as the numbers increase, either student, the alumni are asked to do more interviews or volunteers have to recruit more. And if you've done, say, five a year, ten a year, and nobody gets in over these years, the people are getting frustrated and they're saying, I just don't want to do this anymore. I don't have a success rate. Um, you know, the kids don't get in, and they're getting frustrated as well. Which makes a lot of sense. It's a great read, and everybody should check it out on the Bloomberg Terminal. Janet, thank you so much. Bloomberg reporter, Janet Lauren.